This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech. Today we're going over how to measure and cut a hole in a ceiling in order to install a four-way air tech onto a flex duct, and we're going to be going over all the steps coming up. We normally install these air techs in front of the window in the center about 18 to 24 inches away, and in order to find the center, we would take our measurement, which is 38 and an eighth, and we divide that by two, and we got 19 and an eighth. So based off of that measurement, we would then take our level up to the ceiling in order to find our next reference point. Now we're back in the training shop and here's our mark in the corner for our reference. We're gonna measure 18 inches, though I typically like to go 24. We just don't have room on this little training wall right here. So we got 18 inches and then we're gonna measure from the corner of the room basically. And so if that's 40 inches there, and this is 40 inches here, then we're going to make a mark at 40 inches. So that will be potentially where we're going to be probing up through the attic. And before we take our, our probe, which is basically an insulation hanger on the end of a drill, we can take our stud finder first. So here's where our mark is, and we can just take this and try to find our joists which is right about there. So we see about six and a half inches there. So we have plenty of room. It doesn't look like there's any, any joists or anything in the way very close to where our mark is. Now we'll put our probe through the ceiling. Now, in case this falls down, what I can do is I can just take a, a, a bend right here and kind of push it up past that. Now let's go in the attic and inspect the area. So here's our probe. You can take the entire sheet of insulation out or you can go ahead and rip it where it's at in order to do your inspection. And then you can roll it back in both directions. When we're done, we need to put this around the air tech. And so, as you can see, there's no wires or anything in the way. We have seven inches there and we have over seven inches there. We just need to make sure that we have at least, say, five in both directions, preferably six. So we are good here. So we can go ahead and cut this, so we're going to fold this back as well. To explain the hole size, we can measure from blade to blade on this hole cutter. We have it set for nine and a half inches. Now, we used to cut our holes at nine inches for these air techs from here to here, but now with the R8 insulation on the flex ducts that we're going to be attaching onto here instead of the R6, we need to give it a little bit more room for when we're trying to put this back up into the ceiling again. And how these work is that these are not putting screws into the ceiling. Basically, when you do tighten the screws in the face of this air tech, these little tabs are sandwiching the sheetrock between the face plate here and the tab. Now that we went over our hole size, we're going to go ahead and cut the hole in the ceiling. Normally, we're having to put our template here and trace it to get our nine and a half inch hole. But in this case, with this tool, we just put the drill bit right into our probe hole. So we're gonna remove this and here we go. Now it has to be on high speed and you have to get it fully, uh, fully at high speed when you're doing this. So here we go. So then you just take it down and there's your hole. So you could also hold it in there to just get any remaining dust to settle before you pull this down. The object with this is you really want to uh, practice beforehand. So you want to do this several different times on just scrap pieces of sheetrock. And the object is that you want to have a high torque drill at a fast speed, but you only want to press in a little at a time. Once again, do your practice before doing your holes in an existing building. Now I'm going to link that hole cutter with a dust shield in the description section below, but I want to also give you one example of cutting a hole like we would normally do with a keyhole saw. So this is a keyhole saw. So what I typically do is I'll just twist this to get it in. And 
basically you have the same result. However, sometimes you want to hold a box here and you're going to need a drop cloth below. You could also hold a shop vac while you're doing this hole cutting right here with the keyhole saw. Before we connect this AirTech to the Flex, this Flex inner liner is 7 inch. And so this is a 6 inch ring right here. This is a 7 and this is an 8. And so we need to cut the 6 inch off so we can attach it directly to the 7. Now several ways to do this. You can cut in and then try to pull with this or you can even just try to pull as is like this in order to, to get this to, to rip. So you can do that all the way around or you can cut it with the tin snips and cut it out as well. What I like to do is pull it if you can and then you can always just cut it like this if you needed to. You can always just do this. But anyway, you just use the pull tab if at all possible and just pull it right off. Now we're going to pull the inner liner out and we're going to take this and shove it between the fiberglass and the inner liner and so I'll just show you all the steps. Now we're going to square this up against the wall. We're measuring 12 and a half there and we're measuring 12 and 3 quarters there. So we can just give it a little tap, measure again, 12 and 5 eighths, 12 and 5 eighths heavy. That should be good. So we'll take our, our drill. Alright, when you start to feel it snugging up, you want to stop, you don't want to over tighten it. As well, we're going to check this again, 12 and 5 eighths, 12 and 5 eighths, that's perfect. And now we'll go along to the other ones. You can actually see the plastic start to flex. Now I'm going to check these by hand. Yep, that's all snug, snug. All right, we are good to go. And the other thing is those uh, dampers on the inside, they are fully open. So they could close like this, but they are in the open position. That's where you want to leave them. And if you needed to, you could adjust them right here with a flathead screwdriver. But honestly, you really should not be having to adjust these at all. They should just stay in the wide open position as long as all of your ductwork is sized properly. So 
So I hope this video has helped give you some tips on the installation of AirTax. And if you're looking for any of the tools such as this or this, or the materials that we're using in this video, I have links down in the description section below so you can check those out. Also make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook and quick reference cards, along with our new mini split book. So we have all that available over at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.